we're here at Second Gear Jiu-Jitsu. And look, I want to explore a question that some people you know, encounter, especially when you've trained for a period of time and you feel like you've kind of hit the, the wall. Like you're, you're not progressing anymore. You know, this perception that you, you, you have hit a plateau, dead to rights. Hey. So I'm here, here with uh, David Adams. Um, who teaches a class here and also teaches a lot of other places in this Maryland area. And we're going to try to explore this question. And I want to kind of give, like, I guess I want to kind of keep this discussion really home and, like, quick. And hopefully, you know, hit some you know, tips that are useful. So I would say, let's start off with, what would be the, let's say you had a student come in, right? And they ask you, man, I really feel like I haven't got better in the last six months. What can I do differently to improve? What would be the first thing you would advise them to do? Like one actionable piece of advice. One actionable piece of advice. <sighs> I would tell them to challenge themselves. Whatever position you like, I don't want to see you in that spot. If you're the butterfly guard king, you are no longer allowed to do butterfly. <laughs> For months, I don't want to see you in butterfly. Like, you will be in half guard, close guard. If if the only saving grace you have is going to butterfly and somebody's passing you a guard, you're just going to have to let them pass. You're not allowed to do the butterfly. And through that, uh, through that trouble, you will have to progress. You will have to get better. You'll have to blossom. Because I took away your weapon. <laughs> so you get yeah. You know, I, I, that's, a, that's a pretty good piece of advice there, huh? Right? I give you know, props for that. Like, uh, I also asked you the question as well. Um, I had something different. Like, um, one of the things I always encourage people to do is to get a notebook. But I'm not a big fan of like taking notes. So it's like, it's kind of counterintuitive, but like, I think the, the notebook should be used for a different purpose. Not to like, take like, oh man, go to class, write down everything your instructor says, write down the name of the techniques, write down all the steps of the techniques. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that methodology. What I am a fan of is, hey, man, I just finished training. Write down what are the biggest problems I encountered. Like, I got to this position, I didn't know what to do. What is this position? Like, who in the academy is good at that position? Who can I ask about this position? Oh, man, I tried to hit the submission and it didn't work. Oh, man, why? Why? And you ask yourself these questions, but the notebook is for identifying the problems, right? And your goal is not so much to find solutions when you use your notebook, it's to find problems, as many as you can. So that would be my 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 first actual piece of advice. Definitely. All right? So let's see, we'll, we'll just keep this quick and we'll just go number two. <laughs> number two for you and then number two for me. And then now, uh, you know, how we wrap it up. I like it, I like it. All right, so what you got, what you got? I like it, I mean, number two, I would, roll with people better than you. Always seek out whoever's better than you. If you're a blue belt, you need to be rolling with purple and up. Purple, brown, and black. You're, you're the brown belt, find some competition, like in New York Academy. Like, or invite people over, like host the open mat. Invite everybody from around, come down, and now you have this big melting pot of ideas, you know? And everybody's bringing their technique to the table and, and feel free to bounce a question. Nobody wants to bounce questions off of anybody. We have this, this pride in us. Like, I can't ask that purple belt a question, I'm a brown belt. Like, but that purple belt might have been to one more seminar than you. <laughs> and he might have the trick that'll change your game. So, you know, don't be so prideful. Ask a question and expand your knowledge, yeah? Like, uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. Like, it, it's, as a black belt now, um, it does become harder as you go up the ranks to learn from people who have lower ranks. Like, you have to, you have to kind of stop that mental barrier from like forming and strengthening itself until it becomes rock solid. Right? Because like, there, are, one thing I think about when it comes to the skill set is that like each skill in the art have their own ranking. You know, when I mean that, what I mean by that is that, like for example, say I, like I have one position and I'm, I might have a really good understanding of it and it's like outranking at like a pro belt level. 
And then there's the other position I might be like, ah, I kind of know it a little. Maybe it's a blue belt level. Um, it's another position. I've never seen this position before. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I'm a white belt at that. And like my, my actual belt might be a brown belt, <laughs> right? Because like the, the belt represents your, your broad overview, like understanding what the issue is. But the individual skill sets have their own particular rankings. And like you might have to go to a blue belt to learn something that you're not good at. And like, I think that's a good point to bring up. Right, so now for me, for me, for me, what would I say? It's my number two. Like I hit you with the notebook. You know, some people don't take that advice. <laughs> right? Um, but one thing I've, I've been trying to do um, lately is watch more of my tape. Like as far as like uh, the, the matches I have in competition that are taped and try to study what happened and like ask myself, what could I have done differently in that scenario or this scenario? And I think that's beneficial as well, but it's hard. Like I, I have struggled with it. Like it's hard for me to watch myself roll. All right, I'm admitting something right now. <laughs> um, but I know when I do it, I benefit from it. <laughs> it's strange. Like you're like, I don't want to, well, man, I, I don't want to do it. And then, do it and I was like, oh man, that was awesome. I should have done this a week ago, a month ago. Um, and now I'm trying to uh, actually take more video of the, the roles in the room and start evaluating that with this, do the same lens that I try to evaluate the competition push because like in the room, like you're, you're a lot more playful, you're a lot more experimental. So you will encounter different problems that you might not be exposed to in a, a tournament because you're playing your A game. And like, um, just to kind of piggyback on you, sometimes standing on your A game, like troubleshooting your A game, isn't the, the catalyst you need to really take a, a significant leap forward. So that's my number two. Hopefully that was helping. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Well, we'll maybe do some more, more stuff like this and like, you know, ask some random question and it's kind of trying to make it actionable, right? Um, what else would I just like to say? Of course, if you're in the Maryland area, especially close to Laurel, man, come on, stop by. At Second Jiu Jitsu, we're located at 8730 Cherry Lane and um, check out Adam's brand. Oh, yeah. Check um, out the adamsbrand.com. After you hit the mats, you're going to need a gig. <laughs> so head over to adamsbrand.com, grab a gig. No key and get ready to try. So like one thing like this I'll just mention this is that he and one of his businesses, you know, because like just as a business, um, is that he, he man, he kinda customizes gear for other people in this area and also like he's been doing some a lot of videos and lessons on his site. And I just wanna give him some props, you know? And hopefully, man, I'll get to meet you eventually if we haven't trained yet. Have a great day.